I am very delighted to be here, but let me disabuse you of any ideas that Bill just gave you. I have very fond memories of North Carolina. I spent two summers here at Brevard Music Camp in Brevard, North Carolina. And uh, I think very often to this day of what it was like practicing in these little practice huts with the rain coming down on the tin roof. I played French horn for those of you who are interested. And I had my first summer romance in North Carolina. I'm not going to tell you about that. <laughs> But I really am very excited to be here, whether I'm a little tired or not isn't quite the point. I first want to say congratulations to Governor Purdue, the State Board of Education, the General Assembly here in North Carolina for their vision in putting together this career pathway, career and college promise. Getting to excellence in public schools is really important. I'm frankly overwhelmed with all the people and the expertise that I've met in this day. If you think I remember all your names, I don't. Um, but what I do come away with is a real understanding and a real sense of how many resources there are and how much energy there is. So maybe my title, which doesn't show up all that well, does it? Um, is talking about a national perspective on business, but it's very clear that the business community is already very, very active and engaged in education here in North Carolina. So let me give you a little yikes. I agree completely with Uri. There's lots to celebrate and there's lots to be proud of. There's lots of wonderful things going on. But when I put the business hat on, I sometimes say yikes. Okay, so here's the first thing. We spend more on potato chips than we spend on energy R&D. Now, I get the difference. Energy R&D is the U.S. Congress in its infinite wisdom. I'm unable to say Congress without in its infinite wisdom following up. Um, is making the decision on energy R&D. That's $5.1 billion. And we as consumers are spending $7.1 billion. I, I understand the difference, but I think that's a humbling statistic. The other thing is that the United States is rated by some uh, standards just eighth in global innovation-based competitiveness. The World Economic Forum says that we are number four. The fact is we're not used to being anything but number one. So whatever the right number is, this has got the business community concerned because it's innovation that really drives so very much. What you can see is the number of patents that came out. This is 2009 data, and only four of the top 10 were US companies. This is a dramatic difference from what we used to have because it's patents that lead to new manufacturing, that lead to new sales of new products, that lead to new consumerism. I mean, it's that whole cycle, and only four of them were in the US. I thought you might be interested in the North Carolina data, and I don't think that's really a significant difference, but you can see there are 12 patents per 1,000 individuals. So, so there is kind of a yikes. A little bit of catching our breath. I think I'd also say, and boy, you really can't see this map, uh, that there's a little bit of yikes from the business perspective in North Carolina. There is a report that looks at how globally linked a state's economy is. And what you see, if you can see this map at all, is the upper quartile, which only contains Massachusetts the only one that's in the upper quartile. The light green, which maybe you can see a little bit, um, go on, and it's not until you get to the third quartile that you find North Carolina. So North Carolina's ranking on this new economy index is 24th on knowledge jobs, which talks about the educational attainment of the workforce, the jobs, the types of jobs that are held by managers, professionals, and others. You can see that's 28. On globalization, the amount of exports that you have, you're ranked 10th. And on economic dynamism, that is the, how much job churning is there, good job churning, new jobs turning up because entrepreneurial spirit, and you're ranked 30th. Now, I'm sure you could go to other sources and find other numbers, but I suspect that this at least makes you say, yikes. 
Is this really where we want to be? So that brings me to change the equation. Our tagline is solving America's innovation problem. If you think that's audacious, I'd have to agree with you. Um, but then I'm working for CEOs, and if they don't know what audacious means, nobody does. In fact, it was launched in November 2009 under the President's Educate to Innovate initiative. He made a number of announcements about his interest in STEM education and what he was going to do about it. And in particular, he challenged the corporate community to come together in new ways to make a difference. He reached out to five CEOs, not really for the first time, they had of course worked this out in advance. So he reached out to Ursula Burns, CEO of Xerox, Antonio Perez, CEO of Kodak, Glenn Britt, CEO of Time Warner Cable, Craig Barrett, former CEO and chairman of the board of Intel, and Sally Ride, who's a CEO of her own type and her own way. And he said to them, what can the corporate community do that's different? How can we really be more impactful? And that's where Change the Equation was born. It was actually formally launched at the White House in September, September 16, 2010 to be exact. Uh, Carnegie Corporation gave some seed money as a grant to get us started. They hired a search firm. The search firm found me. I was a staff of one for quite a while. Um, I'm now up to a staff of six, and that's probably where we're going to end up. But we are independent, and that's determinedly so independent. We're nonpartisan, not bipartisan. There's a difference. Education is a bigger issue than politics. Remember that? Don't. You heard it here. And we also are a nonprofit. So all of our resources come from our corporate members or from foundations. We have no federal money whatsoever. That doesn't mean that I don't get phone calls from the White House, including one today. But so there is certainly a link. We are very happy to use the bully pulpit of the White House, of any occupant in the White House, and of the State House, of any occupant in the State House, because we are nonpartisan and this issue is really bigger. What we're about, and the bill said this before, is how do we align the work that we're doing? Just as you find, and I think I've heard this a little bit today, there's so many groups working in North Carolina. There's so many companies working. Can they learn from one another? Can they share things? Can they avoid one another's mistakes? And are there ways that they can collaborate? And we say that we're working on our innovation problem because of the link between innovation and the STEM disciplines. We also are trying to have our members connect with one another and really work together on uh, having a real impact. Whoops. I turned the page too fast. So what are our goals? Well, I'm very careful to say they're not our goals alone. I would hazard a guess that this has a, a piece of apple pie and motherhood in it. I would hazard a guess that almost every organization here has very similar goals. So I'm careful to say we want to think how the corporate community can play a part in this. The first ones are about teaching, and we're trying to say that we want to ensure that every young child grades pre-K through 12, which is our focus, experiences excellent teaching in the STEM disciplines. And we're particularly worried about the look of that workforce. Is it as diverse as the student body? I actually want to put an asterisk on the word teaching, and when I get the time, I'll bring this up with the board, because we want to look at all adults who interact with kids, not just teachers. The corporate community is very involved in informal education almost more than they are involved in formal education. And you're not, you're seeing some teachers in informal education, but you're certainly seeing scout leaders, you're seeing people at the 4-H, you're seeing people at the boys and girls clubs, you're seeing robotics clubs, all these kinds of things that are oftentimes led by STEM professionals or sometimes just by a caring adult. So the point is, can we ensure that 